Hello, everybody. Welcome to Therapeutic Yoga class today. For today's class, we are going to focus entirely on the hip flexors. So to begin class, I find it prudent to go over what are the hip flexors and where are they located. So we have four hip flexors on each side of our body. They are located in the front of the hip region. Of the four hip flexors, we have three hip flexors that attach to your pelvic bone. So if you put your hand on the outside of your hip area, three of your hip flexors attach there. One of your hip flexors does not attach to the pelvic bone and only attaches to the spine. Of those four hip flexors, as they come down your body, they all attach to your leg bone in one place or another. Two of them attach to the inside of the leg bone. One of them attaches to the outside, to the iliotibial band. And then the fourth one, which we're gonna spend some time working on down on our mat today, it runs all the way down and it attaches to your kneecap all the way to your tibial bone. So believe it or not, you have hip flexors that start way up here, but end way down there. Now, why is that important for us to know? Well, for hip flexors, they all have different originations in our pelvis and in our spine, and they all attach and uh, have placement below our hip in different positions. Because of that, when we have dysfunction in one, two, three, or four of those hip flexors, they call, cause all different types of problems. So when you have hip flexor, flexor, <laughs> hip flexor issues, it can create back pain. It can create pelvic pain. It can create hip and buttock pain. It can create IT band pain. It can create knee pain and it can create thigh pain. So there's a lot of issues that can go wrong with your hip flexors. The reason we are focusing on them today. So with that being said, what you're going to need for your class today is a yoga mat. You're going to need a chair that we're going to be using in a little tiny bit. You're also going to need a yoga bolster and a yoga strap. We are going to begin class in standing. So when you're ready, find yourself in a standing position on your yoga mat. Once you're there, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take your feet and place your feet approximately hip distance. Now, one quick trick for hip distance, if you took both of your fists and placed them between those big toes, you can roughly get hip distance for you. Now that you have that hip distance, check out the outside of your feet and make sure that they feel like they're kind of running parallel to one another, either top and bottom of your mat and side or side and side, depending on how you're standing on your mat right now. Now that you have that position, allow yourself to lift your toes for a second and just gently rock your feet forward and backward so that you can feel that perception of the weight going to the balls of your feet and to your heels, balls of your feet and to your heels. And then find that happy middle space between the balls of your feet and your heels and then gently let your toes fall down onto the mat. Now going to your knees for a moment, allow yourself to tighten your knees nice and tight. You may feel your glutes squeeze at the same time and then relax your knees so they're in a softened position and you're not in hyperextension of your knees. All right, take those hands to the pelvis for a moment. Once your hands are on the pelvis, just get a perception. Does it feel like your pelvis sits level to the ground? Is it tilted forward or is it tilted backward? And today what I want you to do is just do a couple of tucks and tilts. And as you do tucks and tilts, use your hands to find that position where you feel, yeah, it feels like that bowl of my pelvis is fairly level to the ground now. Once you've done that, can you just take a moment to check back in with your feet and make sure that you haven't fallen all the way back into your heels or that you've hyperextended your knees? All right, now that you have that, allow your arms to gently rest down beside you. Take a quick look down by just flexing through your head. Can you see your toes? 
If you can see your toes, chances are your rib cage is fairly stacked up on top of your rib cage. But if you look straight down and there is no toes underneath you, then you're likely in a position of your rib cage being behind you. So let's do a quick little breath to kind of get the alignment of our rib cage and our pelvis. So don't change anything that you've already corrected the alignment of the lower half, but take a nice deep inhale and let your rib cage lift up. Hold your breath there and then literally look down and see your feet and your toes. And then as you're looking down and seeing your feet and your toes, exhale the air out and then make sure that you feel like your belly's nice and soft. Now in this position, don't change your rib cage position. Keep the weight into the center of your feet, but gently lengthen your neck back up and let your chin tuck into your throat to get that beautiful plumb line all the way down through our body. Now, the only thing we got left to fix is these arms. If you're like me and have forward shoulders, chances are your hands are touching the front of your thighs, not the side of your thighs right now. So let's kind of all fix that together. So just gently shrug your shoulders slightly up, roll your hands and your shoulders and your shoulder blades so that the thumbs go to the back of you, and then gently let your shoulder blades settle down and give a little tight squeeze between those shoulder blade muscles to make sure your rib cage doesn't change its position. Make sure you still feel the weight in your feet and then slowly let your hands go and they should now voila, be in the correct position on the side of your body. All right, so let's stay here. Tadasana pose, mountain pose in yoga. Keep yourself in this position. Keep that weight into the center of the arches of your feet. Keep your knees soft. Keep whatever you need engaged to keep that pelvis position for just right now. And give me a nice deep inhale into your nose. And then as you exhale, just open those mouth, open that mouth and it's like you're just letting go of tension for a second. Let's do that two more times. Inhale into the nose, opening that mouth and just letting things go. One more time, deep inhaling in, opening that mouth and just letting it go. You've got it. All right. So we're going to start with working on the tensor fascia lata three words complicated name but basically it's the hip flexor that's on this side of your pelvis it's external to your pelvis so obviously its main function is to flex your hip to do this but it also has some other functions of your leg so we're gonna kind of do a nice good standing opening stretch of that muscle to begin to get that good position of our pelvis and get some fine length in our tensor fascia lata so with your legs where they are right now allow yourself to take your left leg and bring your left leg all the way behind your right leg. Now, if you have balance issues and you know, hey, this isn't gonna go well if I don't have something to hold on to, then do it close to your chair so that you've got your chair for balance. Once you have your left leg behind your right leg, bring your hands to your felt pelvis. Most of us, if we have tightness in our hip flexors and tightness through our pelvis area, our pelvis is kind of rotated a little bit to that left side because we took that left leg behind us. So allow yourself to feel your hands on your pelvis and rotate your pelvis back so that it's facing forward where your toes are facing. Now in this position, what we're gonna be focusing on stretching is this left hip flexor. So take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, tighten your abdominals and tuck your tailbone under. Pelvis is forward, left leg is behind you. Tuck that tailbone under. All right. Now taking a nice deep inhale, lift the left arm up. And as you exhale, lean the pelvis over to the left as your rib cage stays stacked over your feet. So you're not fully side bending, you're shearing your pelvis to the left. So see if you can do that. Now in that position, obviously hold on for balance if you need to, wherever you need to. Keep yourself in that side bend, go back to your pelvis for me. Take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under and can you shear that pelvis any further over to that left side? One more time here, deep inhale. And then as you exhale, tuck the tailbone under, 
and shear the pelvis over to that left side. You've got it. Inhale, standing back up. Exhale, drop that hand down and then uncross those legs. All right, let's do the right one now. So to do the right one, take the right leg and bring it behind the left leg. How close you get them is entirely up to you, but have it so that the right leg is behind the left. If you want to make the stretch harder, you're gonna take your feet further away. I'm keeping mine nice and close because I wanna be able to control my pelvis position. Again, holding on if you need something for balance. Don't, we are challenging balance here, opening up through our tensor fascia lata. Now, place your hands on your pelvis. Does your pelvis kind of look like it's rotated to the right right now? If it does, allow yourself to turn that pelvis so that it is facing forward. Now that you're in that position, hands on the pelvis, nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under, you may already feel a little bit of a stretch through the outside of that right pelvic bone where the tensor fascia lata is. All right, right hand, take an inhale, lift it up, and then as you exhale, shear the pelvis as you side bend over so that as you push the pelvis out, that rib cage is still sitting straight on top of those feet. All right, in this position, take a deep inhale, exhale, tuck the tailbone under, shear the pelvis over. You guys have it, let's do that one more time. Deep inhaling here, exhaling, tucking that tailbone and shearing that pelvis over. Very nice, right arm, inhale it up. Exhale, exhale, dropping it down and then uncrossing those legs. So the tensor fascia lata, oftentimes when it's really tight, it can create issues through our iliotibial band and through the outside of our knee. So real good stretch to do if that's your hip flexor, that is your problem. Now, here's what I want you to do. Grab your chair for me. And once you have your chair, uh, place it on your mat or next to your mat, whichever you prefer and then allow yourself to have a seat in the chair. Once you have a seat in the chair, we're now gonna work through two more hip flexors in a seated position. Now, in my humble and personal opinion as a physical therapist, I honestly feel this is the most important stretch for humans to do in sitting because we sit too much because it targets the hip flexor that attaches to your spine called your psoas, P-S-O-A-S. And it also targets the hip flexor that attaches to the inside of your pelvis called the iliacus. And so those two hip flexors in and of themselves, when they're tense and they're tight, they can cause you to feel more stressed because they have a link to your nervous system, but they also put tremendous compression and stresses on your low back. So. Sitting and simply doing this exercise is one of the most important things I think you can do for the lower half of your body. All right, so let's start with our right hip flexor this time. So gently turn your body so that you're facing the left side of your chair. Place your left knee on top of the arch of your left foot. Let your right sit bone sit off of the chair. So you can hold on to the back of the chair if you simply need that for balance. We're gonna do opening through these particular two muscles in two different positions of our leg. The first one is the easiest, the second one is the hardest. So if you struggle with the first one, on the second go round, just do the same thing. All right, right knee, take the right knee and place it directly underneath the right hip. Have your right toes turn under unless you have some sort of pathology through your toes that don't allow you to do that and then just put the top of the foot on the floor. The benefit of having those right toes turned under, you're getting a bit of a plantar fascia stretch as you're opening up through these hip flexors. All right, now with that right hand, reach gently forward with your trunk and place your right hand on your left knee so that you don't allow yourself to backward bend through your low back. Now that you have yourself in that position, take a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, really use your abdominals, really use your hamstrings and gluteals and pelvic tilt and create that gentle opening through that front of that hip. All right, staying right here, take a deep inhale. And on that exhale, can you tilt that pelvis under more as you feel that opening? One more time, deep inhale. 
and exhale. Can you get more abdominals acting, more hamstring acting to create that opening of those hip flexors? Beautiful. Slowly release. Keep your hand or hands on your left leg and simply slide your right leg back as far as you can. So have it so that your body is in line with your leg. So as I slide my back leg up, back, my right leg back, I don't want my body staying straight upright because it's going to put a lot of extension in my spine. So allow yourself to lean forward as you slide that leg back. Now your knee is in extension here. That's the difference, but it's all going to be about getting these abdominals to really cause a tight pelvic tilt. So in this position, can you take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, tuck the tailbone under, but try to straighten the knee all at the same time. Can you feel that opening? Two more breaths, just like we've been doing. Deep inhale here, exhale, tuck that tailbone under, push that heel back. You've got it. Let's do it one more time. Deep inhale here, exhale, tucking under, pushing back with that leg. Excellent, slowly relaxing the leg and then gently allowing yourself just to do a rotation. So now you're facing the right side of your chair. Now facing the right side of your chair, check in that the right knee goes underneath the arch of the right foot first. Left sit bone, have it off the front of the chair. Right hand can absolutely hold onto the chair if you feel like you need to for balance. Once you have all of that done, take that left hand and bring it just to that right hand, right uh, knee so that the rib cage isn't in a backward bend position. Allow yourself to drop that left knee directly underneath that hip. Toes turned under if you want a bit of a plantar splash to stretch. Otherwise, if you've got issues with your toes, just put your foot flat onto the mat. All right, now it's all about that pelvic tilt on this side. So give me a nice deep inhale here. And as you exhale, tight pelvic tilt, Feel that opening through that iliopsoas tendon, the iliacus, the psoas. You're even getting that rectus femoris, that fourth hip flexor. Two more breaths here. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, really tucking under. Yes, feel that opening through the front of that thigh. And one more breath, deep inhaling and exhaling, tucking under, holding right here. You've got it. All right, release the pelvis. Now, Again, we're advancing. If you want to do the same thing, feel free to do it. But if you want to try to take that leg straight behind you, as you take the leg straight behind you, make sure you bring your body more forward so that you're not in extension of your lumbar spine. All right. So knee is straight. Rectus femoris is taken out of the equation now. It's all about the front of this hip. Can you take a nice deep inhale and on the exhale, tuck that tailbone under, push that heel back, ouch. There it is in the front of my hip. Let's do that two more times. Nice deep inhale in. Exhale, tucking under, pushing that heel back. Let's do that one more time here. Deep inhaling in and exhaling, tucking under and pushing that heel back. Good, now release that leg down. Slowly let yourself turn to the front. One last thing here before we get rid of this chair and make our way down to our mat. Now, we've already done several openings for our hip flexors, and it might be that you are at home and you're already feeling a little bit of tension or compression in your low back. So let's do a nice, good sequential stretching through our spine in a sitting position before we say sayonara to this chair for the rest of class. So I have yourself so that your legs are wider than the legs of the chair. Once you have your legs wider than the legs of the chair, take your hands, place your hands on the front of the thighs. In this position, you're gonna start with your head going down first. So sequential flexion, starting from the top and slowly bending all the way down the spine. So let's give it a try. So slowly let your chin come towards your chest first. Then gently let your rib cage start to curl under. You should feel your elbows already bending. Keep the gaze going down and inward here. As your arms bend and you finally get to that low back, get to the point that you feel that your low back is curling, flexing as you're gazing. 
straight back to the back of the chair. Once you feel that you've got your entire spine in a flex position, gently drop your hands downward towards the mat. Check in that that neck is nice and long and that chin is tucked inward. Now hold yourself right here. Take a real deep inhale into your belly. Oh, what a beautiful stretch through your low back and then exhaling out. Well, let's do that one more time. Nice, deep inhale in. And exhaling out. You've got it. Now, just as we came down flexing sequentially, let's use some good muscles of our spine to get ourselves back up. So do this for me. Start to push into your feet. As you push into your feet, you feel that engagement through your legs and your pelvis and your back. Think about where your tailbone and, and your pelvis is here and use your abdominals and your back muscles to start to uncurl that spine. Once you get to the point that you feel you wanna bring your hands back up onto your knees, feel free, but keep slowly uncurling as you bring yourself all the way back up into that upright position. The very last thing to uncurl should be the neck and those eyes coming upward, relaxing the shoulders down. Beautiful. So if you had any sort of compression of your low back opening up through those hip flexors, then hopefully it is gone before we make it down to our mat. All right, we are done with this chair. So what I would like you to do is to take your chair out of the way of your mat, make your way down onto your mat in child's pose, and I will meet you there. All right, let's get our alignment in child's pose here. So can you just check in for a second that you can see that your knees are hip distance apart? Gaze straight back behind you here and see that those feet also make it hip distance apart. Let your elbows relax for a minute. It's not about stretching through your trunk today. But in this position, take a really nice deep inhale into your belly. Get one more stretch of that low back before we tackle those hip flexors again. And then exhaling out. Oh, let's do that again. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. Excellent. Slowly bring yourself up into hands and knees. As you're making your way up into hands and knees, check in that your knees are hip distance. You can't see your feet on the inside or the outside. And then walk your hands so that your elbows and wrists are directly underneath your shoulders. Index fingers are forward, thumbs are inward. Have those hips stacked directly on top of those knees. All right, let's go through three cat cows here. So give me an inhale and sink the belly, sink the spine, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back, length through the neck, gaze upward. And then as you exhale, curl everything under, tuck that tailbone, abdomen in, arch through that rib cage, spread those shoulder blades, chin to chest, gazing inward. Two more, inhaling as everything sinks downward, lengthening through that neck and looking up. And then as you exhale, curling everything under, lengthening through the back of that neck, chin in and looking inward. Last time, inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. Excellent, and exhaling, 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 and exhaling exhaling. You've got it. Now, slowly allow yourself to find your bolster. Once you have your bolster, we are using it for balance first. So have your bolster next to the left side of your mat. Once you have the bolster next to the left side of your mat, allow yourself to find yourself in the position that your right hip is directly on top of your knee. Your left foot is directly under your left knee. Now, if you've got a sensitive knee, allow yourself to take a moment to double or triple up your yoga mat. Once you're there, Use the bolster strictly to give you some balance. All right, right hand, place it on that pelvis. Give me a nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under and slightly lean forward to put some weight into your left foot. Let's do that again. Deep inhale, exhale, tucking that tailbone under. Here's where our focus is today. Let's do that one more time. Deep inhale in. 
exhaling, tucking under. You've got it. Slowly releasing that position. We're going to stay here and do one thing with our foot. So what I want you to do, and each of you at home, you're going to do something different. So what I want you to do is first, just turn your foot slightly inward and then tuck your tailbone under. Do you feel any increase of tension? Second, turn your foot outward and then tuck your tailbone under. Do you feel any increase of tension? Because the second go round, I want it to be specific to you at home, which one of your hip flexors are the tightest. So you're either going to let your foot turn inward, not me, I'm gonna turn my foot outward. Regardless of which way you turn your foot, can you make sure that your pelvis is still running forward? This is why we have this bolster for balance so that we don't fall over. All right, keep that hip stacked directly on top of that knee. Take a deep inhale here. And on that exhale, tuck that tailbone under. You got it. Two more times, nice deep inhale. Exhale, tuck that tailbone under. Next breath, and then we're done deep inhaling. Exhaling, tucking that tailbone under. Slowly relaxing, unrotating the leg, regardless of which way you have it. And then gently bringing your left knee down to the mat, placing your bolster down, making your way back to hands and knees for one more round of cat cows before we change to the left side. So holding yourself in this position, knees hip distance, can't see the feet, walk the hands forward, using this more as a range of motion, kind of loosening things up and getting blood flowing between our stretches. So inhale, sink the belly, lift the tailbone, shoulder blades back, lengthen that neck and chest, look up. And then exhale, curl everything up and under, chin to chest, gaze into that belly button. Two more times. Inhaling and inhaling and inhaling and inhaling. You've got it. And then exhaling and exhaling and exhaling and exhaling. Very nice. One last time. Inhaling, sink that belly, lift that tailbone, really lengthen that neck and look up. And on this exhale, really pull those abdominals up and in, tuck that tailbone, spread those shoulder blades, chin to chest, look in. Very nice. Now, moving to the opposite side. So I am just going to do a quick 180 so that I'm still facing you guys. But now, if you're not changing your position on your yoga mat, have it so that you've got your uh, bolster on your right side of your body. So the bolster on the right side of your body. Then placing the right foot up. So start with checking in with the alignment through your left knee and your left hip. So make sure that they are stacked one on top of the other. If your knee is sensitive, double, triple that yoga mat underneath you so you got some extra padding, okay? Right, uh, right foot, have it so that it's directly underneath that right knee. Yoga bolster, really yoga bolster, purely a balanced tool right now in this kneeling position. Hand on to the pelvis on the left side. All right. In this position, take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under, feel that gentle stretching through those hip flexors. Weight shift your body slightly forward so that there's weight into your right foot. Two more times. Deep inhale here. Exhale, tucking that tailbone under. And one more time here, deep inhale, exhaling, tucking that tailbone under. You've got it. Now slowly release the pelvis. And let's do the same thing we did on the right side. So play with, if you turn your foot inward and you tuck your tailbone under, do you feel any tension other than what you've just felt? Is it an accentuated tension from what you just felt? Then turn the foot outward, tucking under, do you feel more tension? So pick your poison as to which one you're gonna do. I'm gonna stick with turning my foot outward, regardless of which one you choose. Make sure your pelvis still faces straight forward as we're doing this stretch. Make sure you haven't cheated and let your hip go in front of your knee. So stack that knee right back up on top, uh, or hip right on top of that pelvis. All right, here we go. Deep inhale, exhale, tuck that pelvis under. Yes, nice, deep inhale, exhaling, tucking. We have just one more, I promise. Nice, deep inhale, 
and exhaling and tucking. Beautiful, slowly releasing, bringing your left hand, your right knee down, taking that bolster, laying it beside you and sitting back into kneeling. Find those sit bones onto those heels, letting your belly rest down onto your thighs, letting your chest rest down onto your knees. Just letting your elbows rest down today and then slowly allowing yourself to just get that crown of the head to come towards the floor. Now, if your crown of the head doesn't meet the floor because of stiffness in your spine, just simply grab that bolster and place it underneath the crown of your head so that you've got support so that your neck muscles can shut off because we're gonna stay here and do some really nice breaths into our low back. So just as we decompressed our spine, in the sitting position, we're gonna do the same thing here. So allow yourself to take a really deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. Deep inhale into the belly. Then exhaling out. One more breath. Deep inhale into the belly and then exhaling out. You've got it. All right, we are making our way down onto our belly. So a couple things to say about this. We're gonna be focusing on the muscles of the front of the thigh, but specifically trying to target the rectus femoris, which is the hip flexor that attaches to the top outside of your hip and comes down and crosses the knee joint. Now, if you've got a really sensitive low back, a good time here to grab a pillow and put it underneath your belly. If you've got really, really, really tight hip flexors, don't be shy. Even maybe you use your bolster and allow yourself to lay on your bolster. So you kind of pick whatever feels the most comfortable for you to do for your spine. Today is about the hip flexors, but we don't want to make a problem worse trying to get a problem better. Now, before you make your way down onto your belly, grab your yoga strap. Simply make a lasso with the yoga strap. And once you've made a lasso, I made my lasso wrong. Let me fix it because my little neurotic brain doesn't like that. <laughs> once you've made your lasso, what I want you to do is to take that lasso and loop it around the arch of your right foot. Then take your yoga strap and kind of place it up and over your right shoulder. Once you have that position, I say time to make it down onto your belly. Now, now that you're here, you've got access to your right leg to bend it with that lasso and that yoga strap. But before you do that, here's what I want you to do. I want you to allow yourself to bring your legs together. Can you feel that your inner thighs and your knees and your feet are actually touching? Once you have it yourself in a position that you feel that all of the inner thighs, knees, and feet are touching together. And then slowly use your hands to passively bend your right knee to get to the point that you feel no tension in the front of your thigh. So I don't want us to be focusing on quadriceps today. I want us to focus on the hip flexor called the rectus femoris. So if you pull too hard and you already feel tension in your thigh, you're gonna be focusing too much on your quadricep feeling of stretching. So maybe allow yourself to let go a bit of the quadriceps so that you really can target this rectus femoris muscle. All right, so find the position of knee bend that you want to be in. Please check in that your inner thighs and your knees are still touching one another. All right, here's where the magic of that hip flexor happens. So in this position, give me a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, tuck that tailbone under. Do you feel that right thigh? Squeeze the knees together, tuck the tailbone under, keep the tension in the strap with the knee bent. All right, let's do that uh, two more times. Nice deep inhale. Exhale, tuck the tailbone under, knees together, gently pulling that heel to the buttock. 
And one more breath, nice deep inhale. Exhaling, tucking the tailbone, squeezing the thighs, gently pulling the knee. Beautiful. Slowly allowing the right foot to go all the way down to the mat. Once your right foot is to the mat, here's what I want us to do. A little bit of training and tracking and neuromuscular strengthening of that right thigh before we switch over to the left. So simply take your right toes and turn your right toes under. Then in this position, tighten your abdominals, feel that bracing happening of your spine. And then take an inhale and lift your kneecap up off the floor. Try to lengthen your heel away from you. Holding that position, engage through the abdominals. Can you tighten them some more? Then take another inhale, tighten that knee, push that heel away from you. Exhale, keep it right there. And one more breath, tighten those abdominals, brace them. Inhale, tighten that knee, push that heel away from you. And then exhale, slowly relaxing that knee to the floor, top of the foot to the, fat, uh, to the mat, walking your hands back underneath your shoulders, lengthening your neck, settling your chin, maybe even dropping your elbows down to the mat and using those triceps, tuck your tailbone under and push yourself back into a child's pose position. Now, as you gently make your way back into child's pose, your knees might be closer than they normally are. That is a-okay. We're only here as a transition. So now take that right lasso around the right foot and move the strap so that now that right lasso of your yoga strap is around the left foot. And then take the yoga strap up and over your left shoulder. Once you have that, gently bringing yourself back down onto your belly, again, using the bolster pillow, whatever you might need at home to allow yourself to not be aggressive to your low back. Now, same thing on this side. Start with bringing those legs together. So that is called adduction, A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N, adduction. Get the thighs together, get the knees together, get the feet together. Now that you have that adduction, Allow yourself to start to use that strap to passively bend that knee upward. I reiterate, <laughs> it's not about feeling an aggressive stretch in the thigh or above the knee. That would be a quadricep stretch, which we are certainly working on doing right here. I want you to not be focusing on having a really really tense stretch right now. So if bringing your heel to your buttock is more than you can handle, take it away so that your heel is slightly away from your buttock so that you can really actually focus on that rectus femoris. All right, here we go. So figure out where you need to be so that you don't feel too much tension in the front of your thigh already. Check in that those knees and those thighs are squeezed together. All right, let's move that pelvis. Remember, that's where that muscle attaches. So take a deep inhale here and on the exhale, tuck that tailbone under as you pull that heel to the buttock and squeeze those thighs. Yes, let's do that two more times. Deep inhaling, exhaling, tucking that tailbone under, heel to the buttock, squeezing those thighs. And one more time, deep inhaling, exhaling, tucking that tailbone under, squeezing those thighs, heel to the buttock, and then slowly releasing the strap as the knee begins to straighten and the foot makes its way to the floor. All right, now turn the toes under on the left foot. So we want to do some neuromuscular re-education or strengthening of the front of that thigh now that we've done a nice good opening of that rectus femoris muscle. So no tension on the strap here, but in this position, brace through your abdominals. So feel your spine start to stabilize. Then take that inhale and straighten that right knee, push that heel down and away from you. Exhaling here, two more breaths. So bracing through those abdominals, taking a nice deep inhale, straightening that knee, pushing that heel away, training those rectus femoris and quadricep muscles to play better together. One more time, bracing through the abdominals, inhaling, pushing that knee straight, pushing down through that heel, 
and then exhaling, relaxing the knee, relaxing the top of the foot to the mat. All right, hands underneath the shoulders, maybe elbows down on the mat, lengthen that neck, settle that chin, tuck that tailbone under as you push yourself back again into child's pose. As you're making your way back into that child's pose, gently taking that strap away from the left foot, moving your strap out of your way as we are done with it, Settling your belly towards the thighs, maybe spreading the knees a little tiny bit to get hip distance. Knees to the chest or chest to the knees, lengthening the neck, settling the chin down towards the floor or for a crown of the head towards the floor, resting the elbows. Let's do two nice deep inhales here. So deep inhale into the belly and then exhaling out. One more time, nice deep inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Excellent job. All right, now that bolster, bring that bolster back to the center of your mat. Now, once the bolster is back to the center of your mat, a little lesson on how to get on the bolster safely and efficiently. So allow yourself to bring your right hip bone the outside of your hip to the front edge of your bolster. Your knees are up, your feet are bent, or your knees are bent, your feet are together. This is the easy way to make sure that you get on your bolster and your entire pelvis is efficiently on that bolster to start working a little bit more through those hip flexors. So now that you're on that front edge of that bolster, allow yourself to come down onto your elbow and then drop your right shoulder down, drop your head down to the mat. Now, here's the thing, tighten all of your abdominals, brace them, lift your feet up and gently use your right hand to roll yourself over onto your back. Voila, it is literally that easy to do. Now that you have yourself in this position, you are in an inversion. So this is an opportunity for us to really focus on that hip flexor that attaches to our spine, the psoas muscle, but also get a little bit of opening through those other three all at the same time. So in this position, check in that your neck is nice and long, your chin is gently settled into your throat. Make sure that you feel shoulder blades on the floor. And then once you're here, let's just take a moment to bring our right knee to our chest and our left knee to our chest. So beautiful inversion knees to chest here. Make sure your feet are not crossed, but they're about hip distance apart. And then take a nice deep inhale into your belly. And then as you exhale, oh, just allow those knees to come into your chest. Great massage for all of those viscerals that you've got in that belly area. So every organ here is getting a little bit of a compression, which is kind of nice. Nice good stretch through the buttock muscles, little bit of a stretch through those top part of those hamstring muscles. Now in this position, allow yourself to keep the left knee to your chest and then slowly drop the right foot down to the floor. Now it's all about stabilizing the spine. So how good you do with keeping this left knee to the chest is going to allow you to get more length through this right psoas muscle. So take a deep inhale here, and then on your exhale, really, really snug that left knee to your chest. All right, right leg, where it is right now, make sure the leg isn't falling out to the side. Hello, tight tensor fascia lata, but pull the knee so that it's stacked straight up on top of that hip. Here's what I want you to do. Take a nice deep inhale, kick that knee straight, and then exhale, try to pull that heel down towards the floor. Now, if your knee bends a little bit, A-okay, but really try to use your gluteal muscles to get opening through your hip flexors. Left knee is doing its job at stabilizing its spine. So just see how far can you take that right heel to the floor. Now, Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, can you straighten the knee? Can you push the heel down even further? One more time, deep inhaling in. Exhaling, pushing that heel down and straightening that knee. Nice, now slowly inhale, lift the leg up in the air 
and then exhale, pull your knee into your chest. Now we're not done with that right side. Sorry to tell you, we're gonna do it one more time, but we're gonna do it one more time to add a little bit more of that tensor fascial lateral muscle. So here's what you're gonna do. Take that deep inhale, kick that right leg straight. As you exhale, drop that right heel back down to the mat. Left knee, can you make sure that it's nice and snug into your belly and into your spine? All right, now with the right leg, here's what I want you to do. Try to slide the right heel towards the left side of your mat. Good golly, it's a beautiful opening up through that hip flexor muscle. Your knee is very likely gonna bend some more, do the best you can. All right, two breaths here. Can you give me an inhale and straighten that knee and push that heel down and exhale and hold it there? One more time. Inhale, straighten that knee, push that heel down and hold it there. Yes, that is tight on all of us, guys. Inhale, lift the leg up in the air. Exhale, bring that right knee back into your chest. All right. I definitely wore the wrong yoga pants for class today because they're a little too slippery for my yoga bolster. Let's do the opposite side, guys. So right knee into that chest, really secure it into your chest. Once you have it there, give me a deep inhale. Exhale, tuck it in even more. Now with this left leg, inhale, kick that leg straight out. Exhale, pull that heel down to the floor. Yes, the knee shall bend. That is just a matter of anatomy, but do the best you can. In this position, keep that right knee to your chest, secure and stabilize that spine. Take an inhale, straighten that knee, exhaling, pushing that left heel down into the floor. One more breath here, inhaling, straightening that knee, exhaling, pushing that heel down into the floor. Excellent job. Inhale, lift the leg up, exhale, bring the knee back into the chest. Second round, adding a little bit more of that outer hip flexor called the tensor fascia lata. So in this position, snug the right knee back to the chest, left leg, inhale, kick it out. Exhale, pull it down to your mat. All right, now before we do those other two breaths, work on taking that left heel and sliding it, sliding it to the right side of your mat. All right, two breaths here. Right knee is in your chest, guys. Take an inhale, really work on straightening that left leg, pushing that heel down as you exhale. One more breath here. Inhaling, straightening that left knee, exhaling, pushing that heel down into that mat. Beautiful. Inhale, lift that left leg up and oh, exhaling that left knee to your chest. All right, let's embrace this last moment of inversion here. So just gently keep your knees to your chest, gently lengthen your neck, gently settle your chin, maybe even check in that the tongue is on the roof of your mouth, maybe close your eyes. Now take the deepest inhale you can of that belly into your thighs. And then as you exhale, oh, let it go. Again, nice deep inhale, belly into the thighs. And exhale, letting it go. You've got it. All right, now here's what I want you to do at home. Take your hands to the top side of your bolster that's closest to your shoulders. Use those strong abdominals I know you all have and push that bolster down away from your pelvis. Once you have that bolster down away from your pelvis, See if you can grab it with your legs and walk it down to the bottom of your mat and then check in that you've got the position that your heels rest on the bolster. Now that you have that, gently place your feet flat on the mat, knees are bent, hip distance with those feet and those knees. Allow the left leg to gently cross up and over the right leg. Not many times I encourage people to cross their legs, but here's one of them. So we're doing a modification of spinal twist today. So in this position, slowly let your arms come out into a T formation on the floor. Take a nice deep inhale. And then as you exhale, use that left leg to pull that right leg 
as close to the mat as you can on the left side. So yes, it's a spinal twist, but yes, you should feel it through that outer part of your hip. Gently lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and turn your gaze to your right thumb. Now, nice deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. And one more breath, deep inhaling in. And exhaling out. Beautiful, slowly bring your neck back so that you're facing upward and then start at that right rib cage. Pull the right rib cage down, pull the low back down, pull the pelvis down until voila, those knees are back up into their starting position. Place the left foot on the floor and take the right leg and cross it up and over the left leg. Arms are still straight out beside you. Take a deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, right leg does the work to pull that left knee down and towards that floor. Feel that beautiful opening through the left outer hip, abdominal side of the rib cage. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, and take that gaze to the left thumb. Two excellent breaths here. So deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. And slowly bringing your head back to the center. Start at that left rib cage and pull that left rib cage down. Left low back down, left pelvis down as those knees become upright. Uncross the right leg. Take the left and right knees towards your chest. Give a nice, good, maybe rock and roll as those knees are to your chest. And then very slowly, right heel down to the yoga bolster, left heel down to the yoga bolster. Allow yourself to find that comfortable position of your pelvis so that your low back is in a nice neutral position. And then once you're there, We'll let your shoulder blades roll underneath you. Let your arms kind of gently rest out beside you, palms lifted. Lengthen your neck and settle your chin. Rest your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And then gently close your eyes. And now allow yourself to be nice and still. And gently start to pay attention to where you feel movement of your breath in your body. Is it in your belly? Is it in your chest? Is it in your throat or is it at your nose? And doing nothing but being aware of where the air goes in and where the air goes out. as a thought might cross your mind. Recognize it, accept it, let it pass on and go back to, oh yeah, that's right. I'm trying to feel my breath. There goes a thought, I'm sure. Recognize it, accept it, let it go. Back to your breath. Now slowly let your toes start to wiggle, maybe your fingers as well, and maybe move those ankles around clockwise, counterclockwise, wrists as well. And then when you're ready, gently place the right or the left foot on the floor first, followed by the other. 
And then slowly let yourself roll over onto your side. And as you're resting there, maybe support your head, take a deep inhale and exhale. And then when you're ready, on a nice good exhale, bottom elbow, top hand, push yourself up into a seated position. Find yourself in easy pose. Take those hands and bring them to the center of the heart. Place a smile on our face. Nice deep inhale in. Exhaling out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. And thank you for joining me today.